Okay, I thought I would just demo some of the macro capabilities that can be done. The macro toolbar is very useful for augmenting your workflow and putting in a few missing commands that are not in Studio One yet, but you can develop them if they're based off of commands that exist in menus. And there's a few other commands that you can do besides the ones that are in the menus. But I'll show you how to uh, use some of these macros. Here you'll see some macros that I've developed uh, these macros are all icon based and I will talk to you about how to develop those icons in a few minutes here But I kind of want to just show you what they're all about use them for different reasons for different purposes I'm going to go ahead and separate this out just so you can kind of see it stand alone this macro section here called touch record is used on my iPad I use it for a large finger area we can put your finger on things and a lot of times if the transport bar is not available you're scrolled into an area where you no longer see this transport bar and this allows you to float the transport bar and allows you to do the most very basic um, remote recording um, type activities with your iPad so if you're sitting across a room I can for example I'll go ahead and just uh, open up a new project here and let's say I'm sitting across the room with this Mac right here um, adds a stereo guitar track if I'm going to record an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar in stereo go ahead and adds a track it arms a track automatically it sizes the track to extra large so you can see it across the room and it enables the uh, input meters to be on here you can see my voice as I'm talking so you can get yourself a good level set here's an example of another similar one for vocals it does a, a mono track uh, for vocals and sets it to arms it for record and names it vocal similar to the guitar one I'm gonna go ahead and disable that one I'll turn that one on and these are, um, I don't know if you've ever tried to set loop points like this with uh, an iPad before, but it's nearly impossible. It's just too, too many different conditions that can exist around that point end right now. And so until I've improved that, got a uh, kind of a fat thumb way of doing it. So you just basically just stole the uh, left and right buttons off the transport button down here and moved them up here made them a little bit bigger so now you can set this thing where you want it to do and there's your loop start and loop in so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jump to the front of the song set my left and we'll set this one at four beats and set the right and then I can uh, go ahead and record something I'm just gonna record uh, just some finger snapping here so you kinda see what comping looks like so I'll go ahead and just hit record first thing I'm gonna do is I've got a button here called punch and what punch does is it sets pre-roll to be on auto punch to being on and it sets the count in to be on so if I click that on you'll see all these have gone turned on with one button and uh, there's a record on and I'll make sure that the loop is on by the, pressing that button there this button forces loop on jumps to the beginning of the loop circle and starts to play and I'll show you that a little bit more in live action in a few, few minutes here but let's go ahead and just go ahead and do a recording hit the record button it does two major count in and then you, of course you do your part here and I'm gonna snap my fingers and be talking and this is take one this is take two and after I get done with number take number two then I'll take take number three and then we'll see what take number three sounds like and then I'm gonna do take four okay so then you can see our takes two improvements they've done with the comping one is uh, first it comes into this so if you do this it automatically solos that track three and then we'll see what this is take two and then you of course you do your part here but I'm gonna go ahead and take that to this one and just go ahead and uh, promote some of these to the main track there you go and now we have a comp track part here and I'm going to snap what's like and then I'm going to do take four and I'm going to go ahead and use the macro bar to highlight a region of that but to say I'm going to 
use this just I let's say I just wanted to hear this little section in here I click on this one and it, it sets the loop to the uh, existing range and plays loop so it does part here and I'm four things for you part here on a button and I'm this is an example of how here. it really smooths out the workflow part here remember we're all we're, we're part here 20 feet away from our desktop part at this here. point and we're and running all this through our part iPad. here and I'm gonna part here and I'm gonna part here no okay uh, and then of course if you get a good take you always want to hit the save button and let's say we want to start all over I'm gonna redo that undo that undo that undo that undo that and so you can pretty much run the whole show from your iPad just with this one micro, macro bar here. And I'll go ahead and open up another song that has a few more tracks on it. And uh, of course you notice this beautiful uh, zoom they have now can go all the way from extremely large to so small that you can't even read it. And I'm going to show you one of the other macro bars here. This one is called Zoom All. It's not a zoom full, but it's a zoom all. So what it does is it, no matter what your data set here, the number of the length of your tracks and the number of tracks you have, it will zoom into that entire set. So it does a complete vertical. It in essence selects all components in this in the uh, tracks. Does a complete vertical zoom and a complete horizontal zoom. So you always get a perfect picture of your entire project just from that. And that is a macro, a four-step macro. It doesn't exist with any of the existing zooms. Here's your standard zooms if you just want to zoom in on the uh, loop you have set there or if you want to zoom back out and you want to uh, just set a small region in an area like here and then you want to focus in on that. There's your zoom there. So I find these three zooms to be the most useful zooms that I used constantly during the day and constantly moving back to that uh, zoom all one. Next useful uh, macros here you'll see some ones that just let's go ahead and do some just some basic editing here so I'll go ahead and, do and grab let's try this bass track right here. If you were to set a loop we've got a loop set here let's go ahead and cut that loop right there on the and it cuts everything within the loop on all tracks so that's one useful way to do it and it's kind of useful if you're going to be moving around parts of a song uh, this is kind of a poor man's way of doing the nonlinear song building where you record a song, a verse, an intro, a chorus, a bridge, so on and so forth. You can go ahead and highlight those and split them uh, with the loops and then you've got them broken up and then you can drag them and move them around into separate parts of the song. As that example, here is an example of splitting something at a region level. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight a region here and split that out there it is so if I wanted to bounce that here you see I've got a bounce I'm gonna go ahead and take my resolution to seconds and bounce that part and now that part has been bounced if I would apply to effects so on and so forth to it then this one here bounces the effects here's a useful macro uh, for splitting out drums uh, to get if you want to EQ the drums or re do, uh, drum replacement it's just a loop. I'm going to go ahead and run this command right here, which is uh, split transients. So what it does is identify the transients, splits the transients, all in one command. And then I can uh, go through and identify the kicks. Just drag the kicks out. And then I can go in and highlight my kicks and assign a uh, EQ to each one of those down here you see it just automatically assigned an EQ to each one of the kicks and this is just a standard if I wanted to I kind of find that it's useful to only put in the macro buttons that you use. And you know, if you're not using them, just take them out. You can always add them in later. They're always available in the run menu, even though they may not be on the macro bar. They're always here. So there's a lot more things here you'll see that, that there are actually in my, I mean my bars. If you wanted to, if you decided to, you could line this up vertically, which 
creates more of a rectangular thing and lets you stack them this way. So it's useful if you're depending on how you're working. So there you go, macros. Use them just for what you need.